Ladies and gentlemen, the following presentation is rated R, rich in real content, using strong suggestive language. Please turn off your phone, close Facebook, and open your mind. And now, the man who has turned thousands of agents into real estate rock stars. He is known as the expired and FISBO guru, the Tony Robbins of real estate. He is the author of the Expired Plus System, the Presentation Plus System, and the latest program, the Fizz Barino. Please welcome your coach, Barino. Welcome, you guys. Welcome to another edition of Borino Live. Thanks for being here today. I appreciate you guys. Awesome to see everybody. I enjoy doing these. We've been doing so many. You've noticed that we really up the game because there's more of you, of course, more questions, and the times are challenging. The market is changing. The consumer is changing. The systems are changing. We got to keep up. So my duty, honor, responsibility is to help you, to deliver everything I know to help you as much as I can, to tell you about my systems, my coaching. If you want to come on board, we'd love to have you come join the path. But the reason we're here today is to make you better. And lately, more and more, we've been talking about the mindset. So today I want to chat about it, but I also want to answer a question. Let me show you. We're going to get to Brad's question about how to handle the situation where you talk to a seller and they have somebody who's interested in a house. The problem there is not the technicalities. The problem is the setup, and I'll help you with that. <coughs> All right, my friends. Good to have you. Welcome, everybody. Zach is here. Let's say hello to some people. Tati's checking in. Good to have you. Nice. Michael, greetings from rainy Fort Lauderdale. Rain says, hello, Sergeant Borino. You're an awesome trainer and mind-blowing fixer. Thanks for your inside training modules. Glad to have you. I really appreciate it. Hey, Danielle, good morning to you as well. Angela checking in from Savannah, Georgia. We are ready to rock and roll. So, Coach Borino with you. Let me just hit the recording. Forgot that. There you go. Now we're recording. So this is the official welcome from your coach. Important message today. Important thing because I see so many of you guys are getting tripped up and are not where you want to be. So I want to help you today. Today will be an important lesson about motivation, money, and your mindset. I wrote a book about it. I felt it was necessary to write a workbook. I wrote a workbook specifically to help you with that. It's part of the path. It's the first chapter of the path. I get you guys, and I very much appreciate it. I've had the privilege over 20 years to train tens of thousands of you. And every single one of you, I appreciate the opportunity to help you. But very often, I get this question, or it's not even a question, it's a plea. Borino, help me. I just don't feel motivated. You got to help me. I don't feel the motivation. I don't feel the push. Push me. Fix me. And I know there are days, some of you are rocking it, floating, just going, you know, and everything just goes right. And you have the perfect phone call, you have the perfect listing, the deal gets accepted, or you close the deal, you get paid. Kumbaya. But there are also days where it sucks. There are also days where nothing goes right. You sit on the phone for two hours prospecting, nothing. You're door knocking, nothing. You do an open house, work your ass off, post an ad on Facebook, pass out flyers, talk to neighbors, do all the things right. Bunch of signs out there, nobody shows up. You work your ass off on a deal, and then two days before closing, the buyer backs out. The seller passes away. <laughs> all of that happened to me. I had a client who got divorced while we were under contract in escrow. It's a tough business at times, right? And unfortunately, you've been told a lie. You've been told a bullshit lie saying, find your passion and you will never have to work the day of your life. And I'm calling bullshit. I'm calling bullshit. You may love all the people in the world. You may love real estate. You may love all that. If you're not making money, if you're not having the lifestyle, if you're not enjoying the fruit of your labor, you hate it. Or worse, you just kind of grind. See, going to work as a real estate expert, as a pro, high status rock star, requires a lot of work. 
a lot of rejection, a lot of stress, regardless of how you generate leads. Now, my suggestion always is, you guys, we know, talk about it, low-hanging fruit. Go after the high probability leads. But there are only two ways you're going to make money. Either you're going to spend money, invest in systems, advertising and marketing, or you're going to work your ass off. Either way, this ain't going to be easy. So this bullshit about love your work and be passionate about it is bullshit. It's not true. You're not going to love prospecting. You're not going to love being rejected on follow-up. You're not going to love doing a listing presentation, working your ass off, and the seller will overprice the fucker by hundred thousand. You're going to love that you're not going to get that listing because somebody else who offered a discounted commission got it, or worse, they sold it to an eye buyer. There's a lot of disappointment. There's a lot of stress. But you know, where's that optimistic, positive, passionate Tony Robbins of real estate you were talking about earlier on the intro? The reality is, you're not going to fall in love with the business. And people who tried it are the ones who look for motivation. Motivate me, please, fix me, help me. That's impossible. So here is an alternative. Here is what worked for me, what I think will work for you. Instead of motivating yourself. See, the fallacy is this. What is motivation? It's an emotion, right? So you feel motivation. Therefore, you're going to take action. So if I don't feel this, it's hard to take action. I'm going to wait to be inspired. And I was one of those fools, trust me, I know. Everything I teach you is from experience. I was the biggest idiot of real estate, hoping for motivation, hoping for inspiration, hoping for the right feeling. When it feels right, I'm going to jump in and do the action. I wanted to be passionate. I read all the positive thinking books. Find what you love. Be passionate. Follow your dream and your calling. No wonder we have such a huge failure rate. It breaks my heart to see good people fail in this business. You know the biggest problem? Right there, the mindset. The problem with this traditional model you've been told is that you're relying on how you feel to get shit done. And then you do the work and nothing works out for a while, which is normal, it's natural. Again, it's your emotions as a reaction to that action and you're in this loop. You feel shitty, you don't take action. Then you feel shitty about not taking action. You see the problem? You see that? You with me? This is broken. This model is broken. And even if you spray Pacroban cologne on it, or Brute, or Chanel number no. 5, it's still going to stink. It's still a pile of shit. And no amount of rah-rah positive thinking, let's get all pumped up. You know how those, we used to have these office meetings, and usually it was the title company would bring coffee and donuts, everybody would be hyped up on sugar, and they would be jumping up and down, feel all motivated, ready to go, then it would prospect for an hour, then didn't work, emotion kicked in, bad habits kicked in, lack of action, inconsistent action, business in a tank, 80% failure rate. We have a problem. We have a big problem. It is the feeling bad that you're trying to fix. It is the discomfort that you're trying to remove. I go twice a week, I do the Orange Theory workouts. Anybody go? Anybody familiar with it? Love it. Really good. Intense. And then twice a week, I work out with my personal trainer, George. Once a week, I do yoga. As you can tell, can you tell? I still have a little belly, but you know, I feel pretty good. I'm, I'm in a decent shape. It helps me mentally more than anything. I'm not gonna be Arnold, but I do it. My man George says, if it becomes too comfortable, too easy, you're wasting your time. And the more I do these exercises, physical exercises and group exercises like Orange Theory, which I'm really enjoying, the more I recognize the parallel between the workout, the health, and the business. The moment you get too comfortable, when it becomes good enough, you're stuck, you're screwed. The moment it's your emotions, how you're feeling, controlling what's going to get done, how soon, and with what intensity. Your business is in trouble, your future is in trouble, your family is in trouble, your money is in trouble, you're in trouble. I want you to understand the depth of this approach, the problem, how deep this is. 
And how widespread this bullshit is, well, let's just read some motivational quotes on Instagram. Let's look at this beautiful poster we have on the wall. Let's recite some affirmations. It's all going to be good. You're going to feel better. You're going to go to work. The problem is it's backwards. The problem is this, my friends. The problem is you got to start with action. Prepare yourself. Yes, put yourself in good state. Absolutely. But you can never let how you feel, whether there is a motivation or not, control what you're going to get done. Because if you do, it's going to be very inconsistent. And yes, you might have a great month, but you're going to have a shitty month. And more importantly, you will not be in control. So the first order of business is reset the mindset. What is the goddamn mindset anyway? I keep talking about it. What the, what the hell does it actually mean? Now you're telling me I can't be positive and optimistic? That's not what I'm saying at all. You should have the right mindset, the money mindset. Recently I posted an interesting question for you guys. Would you like to know where your money thermostat is set? Because, let's be honest, the only reason you do this, and remember I'm going to tie it in with talking about passion. You're not going to be passionate about real estate. You're going to be passionate about working with some of these people. Buyers who back out on you, sellers who can be pain in the butt. Not everybody. There are plenty of nice people, of course, I'm generalizing, but you understand. There are many things that are challenging here. It is the challenge, it is exactly that, that will help you grow, and that's the secret. It is the challenge. Because you're not going to go hike in Kansas. You know what I mean? The mountain has to be pretty big. When I was about 14 or 15, my school, my class, went on a ski trip. And there was a girl I liked. Isn't there always a girl? <laughs> there was a girl I really liked, and I wanted to impress. And so one day, I decided I'm going to strap my skis, my boots, on my backpack, and I'm going to hike to the top of the mountain where we were skiing. We were staying in the resort down in the chalet. It was about 20 of us. And I said, I'm going to hike it up there. Now mind you, this is winter, snow, cold. I'm about, I don't know, maybe 15, maybe 16, something like that. And I, of course, made sure she knew about the challenge I put on. So, <laughs> early in the morning, after breakfast, I get ready, I put the gear on, and I start hiking up. And I put, picked the path where everybody else who was skiing, including the girl, could see from the chair. And the first half an hour was okay. I mean, I'm young, I'm strong. I was a little younger than now, a bit stronger than now, so I'm going. And then about halfway through, I feel like I probably bit a little more than I could chew. I was getting really tired because the snow, the winter, the exhaustion, and it was a big fucking hill. The reason I accepted the challenge and the reason I want to impress the girl is if it was a little hill, a little tiny thing. She wouldn't care. There'd be no challenge in it. There'd be nothing to demonstrate my proudness, my strength, what I'm capable of, my commitment. And I stayed with it. And I made it all the way to the top. And it was challenging. It was difficult. But it was exactly because it was challenging and difficult to get to the top that made it worthwhile. Your business is that mountain. And every day, you set a peak to which you're going to climb. And it is precisely because it's challenging. It's precisely because of what you can do. 99% of the people out there cannot do, nor would they be willing to do. The, the stuff you have to learn, the things you need to know how to do, the communication, the stress, the time management, the organizations, the laws, the rules, the marketing. There's a whole bunch of stuff. The hats you have to wear from a psychiatrist to marriage counselor to first-time buyer counselor to finance counselor to legal counselor to real estate expert. I mean, holy shit, there's a lot to it. Most people can't do that. But it is precisely this challenge to get you to that top. It is the struggle, it is the difficulty and the challenge and the effort you need to put in that's going to, once you reach the top, make it worthwhile. We'll look down and look at me, what I've accomplished. Because, friends, the news is, if it was easy, if anybody could do it, you wouldn't have the potential to make hundreds of thousands of dollars, 200, 300, 500, million. I had a dinner with my man Mike, good friend of mine, client of mine, successful agent. 
it's going to make $1.2 million this year as a real estate agent to him. $1.2 million. He's been in the business for what, about eight years, nine years? That's the kind of business you can do. But what Mike does, most people cannot do. The mountain Mike climbs, most people are not willing to climb. Not that they don't know how, it's not about knowing. It is about being willing to take action regardless of the motivation. His mindset is set on, I'm going to get to that fucking thing no matter what. The payoff that I'm going to get up there, which is provide job security for other people that work with him, which is to provide for his family, for himself, having the freedom, having the lifestyle, matters to him more than how he feels. The two options Mike has is if he doesn't feel motivated, change how you feel, change your state, and there are tools, ways to do that. Or do it in spite of how you feel. Do your best, but job's gonna get done. And this is where majority drifts off, gets left behind. Even some of you right now are sitting there going, oh, let me see what's going on on Instagram, or oh, I need to answer this, this text. It's uncomfortable to know the truth. It's uncomfortable to hear what it really takes to succeed. That the answer is not in a magic postcard, the, 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 the answer is not in a magic Facebook ad, or in a clever script or a letter. The true road to the wealth you seek and the freedom you want is in you. And where you get tripped, where you get stuck, is on your emotions. You let your emotions control your income and your actions. So one, get inspired. Get inspired. There are only two ways you're going to get there, friends. Either create a massive amount of pain or a massive amount of excitement. Be inspired. I create a lot of pain. That was the whole homeless business. Now I understand it. Now I see the pattern. Now I see why I created such a stress and tension and pressure and discomfort to finally push me to action. It's a painful way to do that. Why not rather just rather get inspired? The future you can build, the vacations you can go on, who you become, the mountain you conquer, the goals you set, the lifestyle you're going to provide for you and your family. That matters to me right now. Providing for my kids, for my wife. We're planning a Christmas vacation. Now we're talking where we're going to go and what we're going to do. It's awesome. But it holds me accountable. Because I'm the provider. Yes, Hannah has a very successful business. She's doing great. She has a very successful staging business here in DC. But my role is to be the alpha of the family. And I love that role. And I need to provide. That inspires me. You need to figure out what inspires you. But there are days I'm not inspired, people. Trust me, my friends. There are days where I would rather put my feet up, play a video game, watch television, do anything else, play music. Shit still needs to get done. And she gets done, the best I know how. There are days where I'm super productive. There are days, eh, not so much. But I can't let that stop me. It's a combination of inspiration, part two, discipline. Now you need both because if you're just riding on discipline, you're gonna grind yourself to death. It's gonna become a chore and you're gonna figure out a way to sabotage yourself. That's when the inspiration kicks in. That's the fuel, that's the juice, that's the excitement. Now here's where the problem is. If you don't have super painful experience here or super exciting goals here, you're going to be stuck somewhere in the middle in what I call the Toyota Corolla syndrome. And here's how I know. I posed this question recently. This is a simple test that will tell you where you are. How much cash can you pull out of your personal checking account right now? How much cash, liquid cash, can you get out of your account right now? Less than 10,000? Less than 5,000? Less than 1,000? That is your lower threshold. We all have a money thermostat. And it has two settings, just like in our house, thermostat. We had kind of cold days last few days, been kind of chilly in the 30s right now. So the thermostat is set to two temperatures, the lower temperature, the lowest, which right now is set, I think, at 65, and then the highest, which is, I think, 73. 
When the house temperature drops below 65, the heater kicks in. And it starts heating the house. Until it's 73, it shuts off. So the temperature will always be somewhere in between. Same thing with your money. Your mindset has a money thermostat. What is the least amount you're willing to put up with and what is the max? The least amount is the amount you have in your checking account you can pull as cash. That's what you're comfortable with. Now you may say, shit, Borino, I'm not comfortable with it. I want to change. And I said, bullshit. It is the reality that will tell you the truth. Not what you want, what you wish, what you're hoping for. The dreams are good. The goals are great. The mountain up there, fantastic. But the reality is this is the amount in your checking account. And friends, if it's less than 10 G's, you're asking for trouble. You're living in a very dangerous, unbalanced financial situation. You might not even know, or maybe you know. What if something, God forbid, happens? There's an emergency, car breaks down, medical, whatever. Or a great opportunity to buy an income property at a phenomenal price. I missed one like that. It's really funny. This was 20 years ago. I was a rookie listing agent, maybe a year in the business of that. I met this nice guy, super nice guy. He was a firefighter. He says, I'm getting divorced. I need to liquidate. I own a four-unit apartment building here in Whittier, California. Would you like to buy it? I don't want to go on the market. I don't want to deal with it. I have tenants there. It's a pain in the butt. I'll sell it to you. You're a nice guy. I like you. I need money now. We need to settle with my ex. You want to buy it? And I freaked out. My money thermostat, my fucking expectations of the wealth I was going to build was so low, I had like $700 in my checking account, tops. So I said, no. And I led him team up with another investor, another guy. I made a commission. That was my limited belief and limited restriction. Oh, I'm going to make some money on this rather than creating wealth. And I passed on this opportunity. Had I bought it back then, which was a big mistake, today I see it, it would have been worth a million and a half. It would have created wealth. Because I didn't have the resources, and more importantly, I didn't have the mindset of the wealth. There are op opportunities all around you, new clients, new transactions, investments, all around you. Plenty of them and you're passing them by. You know why? Because of your thermostat is set too low. You got to reset what is the least you're comfortable with. You know the best way to do it? Add a fucking zero to it. That's a good way to do it. I'm not very good with math. Zeros, I can do. <laughs> you're with me? So what do we have now? Just add a fucking zero to it. Now, what if right now you added a zero to it? Would your lifestyle change? The answer is yes, but here's an interesting thing. Right now, your monkey, little chatty monkey brain, your croc brain freaked out. And one way or another told you, impossible. That's the result of the mindset. And then increase how far you can take it. What you believe is possible. I work on it every day. I push that upper limit every day. Every day I see new opportunities. Every day I see a new chance. Not just to make money. That's a byproduct. And it's not my main focus. It's to help you guys. And I know as a byproduct, I'm going to make more money. I mean, I'm in the business. Of course, I own a business. We need to create profit. I have several employees I'm responsible for. I'm responsible for your success as well. And I take it very seriously. This is what you need to work on. And understand, yes, it will be uncomfortable at times. But somehow, lately, as a society, at least that's what I see, I have noticed, you notice how we have become conditioned that it's not okay to feel bad? We don't get regular television, so when I travel, it's kind of interesting for me not to watch the TV shows, but watch the commercials, because we don't get them, I don't see them. It's crazy how many of those commercials promote a pill for this, a pill for that. Does it hurt here? Does it feel bad? Can sleep? Can do this? This is uncomfortable? We got a pill for that. Have you noticed that? We have been conditioned that feeling bad is bad. We have been conditioned that discomfort is not right. We have been conditioned that you always need to be happy, optimistic, positive. I'm calling bullshit and all of the above, friends. 
Climbing through that hill was uncomfortable. Going to the gym every day is uncomfortable. You doing prospecting every day will be uncomfortable. Boring, tedious, difficult. It's just part of the deal. There'll be days where you're going to enjoy it. There'll be days where you don't. But for those of you who have kids, remember the day they start walking. First the wobbly, kind of grabbing everything. Remember that? And then they fell down. Boom! Scared. Hurt. Maybe bruised. And crying and freaking out. Remember that? And then you help them. They wobble again. They try again. Then again. And then the first couple of steps, you go, oh my God, my child took the first step. He's going to be a professional athlete. <laughs> what happens next? They fall down again. They get scared. They cry. They get hurt. They get back up. They get back up. They get back up. The only way they're going to learn is through the discomfort. Because they're figuring out this is what works, this is what doesn't. And yet here, in real estate, it seems like those rules don't apply. It needs to be perfect. It needs to feel good. It's like, who sold you on that lie? And this doesn't mean real estate. That's life. That's life. Whether you have a 9 to 5 job, whether you want to retire, whether you want to, there will always be a set of problems you have to deal with. And it is your ability to be resilient and plow through those problems as best you can will help you grow and make you feel better at the end. The kid would not go halfway through saying, well, fuck it, I just, I'm not meant to walk. Not for me. Not my thing. Got to try something else. It feels better. That's easier. Or you wouldn't go to the kid, or you're not just motivated. Would you go to your child and say, you're just not motivated enough. You need to be motivated. You need to be passionate. You need to be in love with walking. No, just fucking walk. <laughs> Let's go. So the secret is when you feel like it's fantastic, work on it, absolutely, but don't let the action be postponed just because you want to avoid discomfort. Discomfort is part of life. Discomfort is part of real estate. Whether you work high property leads or you work internet leads, whether you do direct mail, you do open houses. I mean, you can do 45, 50 different ways of generating business. I promise you at one point, there'll be something that's not going to feel right. It's just part of the deal. Warren Buffett has bad days, has days where he doesn't feel like it. There's days where he's stressed out. The dude makes a lot of money. <laughs> you follow my drift? You understand what I'm telling you? Take action. So here's how you take action. Because this can get very complicated, very overwhelming. You can go the other extreme. You can be like those people who hit the gym the first day trying to push 300 pounds. And they're going to get crushed. They show up in brand new Nikes, air pads, you know, the whole thing. And then they almost kill themselves at the gym. They get home, they're sore, they stand on the scale, and they go, fuck, I, didn't I haven't lost a pound. Working out doesn't work. So that's the second extreme. You want to be right in the middle. So here's how it works. Get inspired. Set your day right. Understand why you're doing it. Have that beautiful why. Have architecture of your lifestyle the way you want it. You're in control, friends. You're in control. You're in control. You're in control. Nobody controls it but you. You don't depend on the market, your clients, other agents politicians, the president, none of that matters. You matter. You're in charge. You're driving. So take ownership, take responsibility, and take ownership how you feel. If you feel shitty, feel shitty. Get the job done. If you feel great, feel great. Get the job done. Imagine you're expecting a surgery. You're in a hospital. You're laying in bed. They put the drip in you. You're falling asleep. And suddenly the doctor shows up. I'm just not feeling it today. No surgery today, sorry. I can't help you. Well, like, get the fuck out of here. Do your job. Your job is just as important. You're not saving lives, but boy, you're saving lives in certain ways. I mean, think about it. Don't you have a client? Don't you have a situation where they really need your help? Where they really need to move? Where it really makes a huge impact on their life, on their lifestyle, their income, their money situation, all that that's related to selling a house and moving. Think about it. It's a big deal. And they could not care less how you feel or whether you're motivated or not. Get the fucking job done. That's your task. That's your job. And if you do that well, regardless of how you feel, you're going to make a lot of money, help a lot of people. And at the end, you're going to feel good. You know why you're going to feel good? Because you got the job done. And very often, especially when it didn't feel like getting it done, like me going on that up on that fucking hill, that's what feels really good. That's what brings back the motivation, the inspiration, is the action. Because it's a circle. 
One feeds the other. It's all connected. But the way you start moving that wheel is sometimes just right here. So my recommendation is this. Do this right now with me. Right now. T. Harv Ecker said, how you do one thing is how you do everything. So do this right now, because if you do this right now, there's a good chance you're going to succeed tomorrow. Do this, really. Take out your calendar right now. Whether you're watching this on replay or live, doesn't matter. Just do this. Take out your calendar, whether it's your smartphone, whether you're using the, the Google Calendar, whatever calendar you use, paper, it doesn't matter. Take it out right now. Okay? Got it? Do it. Really do it. There's a small percentage of you who will actually do as you will benefit. The rest of you fuckers, come on! Let's go! Do it! T trust me. Take out your calendar. Look at tomorrow. Look at tomorrow. Plan three things on that calendar right now and estimate the best you know how. Just give it your best guess. What will you get done tomorrow? Pick three things, and I call those MPTs. Most pro productive things or most profitable tasks. Same thing, MPTs. Pick three and estimate how long will it take. Be specific. Be measurable, put a start date and end date, all three. Now, here's the deal. Pick three that will move the needle the most, that will make the biggest impact on your business, that will make the biggest difference. If you can get an appointment, go get an appointment. If you cannot get an appointment, go find somebody who you know may want to have an appointment. If you don't have anybody, start there. Get some leads. Pick three things, specific, actionable things with a start time and end time Put them on your calendar. Do it right now. Pick three. Simple. Simple task. Simple action you're going to take tomorrow. Put it on your calendar. I'm going to do this from 9 to 10. I'm going to do this from 10.30 to 11.45. I'm going to do this from 3 to 7. Block it out right now. Yeah? Do it right now. Okay. I'm watching you. I can see you. You know, this new technology, this VR Technology, I'm looking at you, 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 right now. Do it right now. Put it down right now. Shut that thing off. Turn it off. Do this. All right. So you got these three. Now, here's what I want you to do. Look at those three things. Picture yourself at the end of the day, looking back at your day, feeling good because you got them done. Imagine what it would be like to be on top of that mountain where you conquered these three things how the needle moved, how your business changed, how you feel different, how you're getting shit done. Imagine that for a second, just for a second, just close your eyes and feel tomorrow, end of the day, you get home, you talk to your spouse and you say, good day, productive day. This crazy boy, Barino, you won't believe what he made me do. But it was a good day. I somehow feel different. I got shit done. All right? Now, step three. I want you to commit that tomorrow, the day does not end until those three things are done. The three most profitable, most productive things are done. I want you to commit. Now, you know the commitment is not an agreement. It's not a good intention. It's a fucking commitment. That means if it's not done, your day is not done. And I have days where I have to stay till 9, 10 o'clock at night to get shit done because I made a commitment. Make this commitment now. And the way you're going to declare the commitment, you're going to make it public, is I want you to type in the comments, I commit in all capital letters. In all capital letters, I want you to type in, if you've done step one, step two, step three, I commit. Declare it as a commitment. Do it right now. And I'm going to show some of the comments, some of you guys who are willing to do this. Be very specific. Are you going to prospect? How? How much? How are you going to measure when it's done? You're going to follow up. How? How much? So that it's a simple checkbox. Yes, done. No, not done. That's it. There's no ambiguity. Don't be ambiguous. That's where the confusion comes from. That's where the stress comes from. That's where the overwhelming comes from. Be very specific. How many people are you going to call? Who are you going to talk to? How are you going to get it done? From when to when? Okay? So if you commit to that, type I commit. We got the first one. Karen. Karen is committed. Awesome. Good job, Karen. Derek is committed. Excellent. Oscar is committed. Yes, baby. Polly, she's on board. Christopher, well done, my man. He is committed. Excellent. Now I want you to do this from now on every day. This is your new business operating model. 
new standard procedure. Where you pick three things, you say, I'm gonna get these three things done because they make the biggest impact, the biggest difference in my business. I'm not gonna be attached to the outcome I can control, how I feel or how people respond or what's gonna happen. There are certain circumstances completely out of your control. But there are third certain things you control. Focus on those. Me climbing up that mountain, I control. How fast and how soon I got up there, not so much. But every step was a decision. Yes, I'm going to go and finish, or no, I'm going to quit. And that girl was way too cute for me to quit. Are you with me? Is this helpful? Who else is committed? Billy is committed. Well done, Billy. Jesus is committed. Danielle is in. Excellent. Mark is in. Karen is in. Todd is in. Awesome. Good job, you guys. Greg is in. Mita, I commit to call. Five expired from 9 to 12. Two, call five Fizzbills. Commit visiting five expires. Excellent. I commit. I promise. Vicky, there's a difference between a promise and a commitment. There's a difference. There's a big difference. I promise is I'm going to do my best, but if I don't do it, I'm going to feel guilty about it. That's a promise. Commitment is no plan B. This shit will get done no matter what. Come hell or high water. Big difference. So pay attention. Your language will give you away. Good job. The, <laughs> that money is way too cute to pass up, says Tati. I like that. <laughs> you see, the money will be the freedom. The money will give you the stuff you want. I keep telling you guys, money will buy you everything. Money will buy you happiness. Let me give you some examples. Taking my family to a nice resort over Christmas will make us super happy. Without money, I couldn't take them. Can we be a happy home? Yes, of course. But if I had a choice, being stuck in Virginia in December or being stuck in Cancun, I'll take Cancun, personally. I don't know about you. Money will buy you happiness. Money will buy you health. I can hire a personal trainer. I have the best dentist. I have the best doctors. I can buy best food that's good for me. Money will buy you all that stuff. Money will buy you love. I can take my wife to nice dinners. I can treat her, buy her presents. We'll we would love each other if we we're broke. I don't know for how long she would stick around. I wouldn't stick around somebody who's a loser. Money will buy you everything. It's not the answer to everything, obviously. It's a means. But you notice that those that criticize the most are those who don't have any, those that put you down, they call you materialistic, they call you your money focus, money grabbing, whatever, are those who don't have any. People with a lot of money will tell you, shit, yeah, it's good. It's good to fly first class. It's good to own a Mercedes. It's good to own a nice home. It's good to provide for your children good education. It's good to have money. It's good to help other people through the means. I now employ several people who wouldn't be having the opportunity to work and have income if it wasn't for me. Money is good. So don't put it down. There's nothing wrong with wanting money. Money is the means to whatever inspires you, to wherever you want. That's the secret, friends. Helpful? Kim commits. Excellent. Love to see it. Ray commits. Danielle commits. Wonderful. Deborah is committed. So is Mary. Vicky, yes. No plan B. Love it. Excellent, friends. All right. Was that helpful? Watch this a few times. Go through this exercise a few times. It's been long overdue. Let's talk about my man Brad. Brad met with an expired today that told me the whole story about his neighbor trying to buy a house. But then the neighbor's house didn't sell, so it all fell apart. So I'm going to hand deliver a letter tomorrow and would like tips and advice on the wording. Let's find a way, um, can we shoot text? I'm not gonna read the rest because it doesn't really matter. So the situation is this. My man Brad, good job contacting the expired listing. Had a seller who says, my neighbor across the street wanted to buy the house, that didn't work out, what do we do? He would like to have a magic letter that would get him the listing. Yes, you can go to the neighbor and says, I understand you were interested in a house across the street, I'm here to help. You can talk to this seller as well, but here is the overall situation that I would like to take from a different angle for you guys, so it makes sense. The expired listing is now in control of the situation saying, well, if this guy buys my house, I'm listing. And I would flip that around completely. I would start a conversation, why are they selling in the first place? What is really their core driving emotion? What is it they're really trying to do? 
Why are they moving? You're trying to focus on the mechanics and find a solution there to make a quick sale, which is fine. But before you can do all that, understand the client the best you can. Understand their situation the best you can. What is their real motivation to sell? Because then I can say, well, you know, the guy across the street may or may not buy, it doesn't really matter. What if there was a way you could put even more cash in your pocket, possibly? Whether he's going to buy it or somebody else. Would you still be curious? Can we explore that? That's the question I would ask. After a few other questions in a conversation, I would have mainly about what is it that you're trying to do? Give them the opportunity to be understood. It is one of the most secret, dominant desires people have. It is one of the deepest desires they have is to be heard and understood, not sold. Other people will try to sell them. Well, we can do this and we can do that. Stop. Sit down with him for 10 minutes. Have a cup of coffee. Nice cappuccino like this one. Love these things. And really explore and tell him, well, whether this guy buys it or somebody else, we can find a good qualified buyer. So let's figure out what is the most they would be willing to pay. How much cash are you going to put in your pocket after we're done? How long would it take realistically? Do we need to do something about the house? Is there something we can do to enhance it so that you get even more money, make it more presentable? And then we'll see. Maybe we'll decide to work together. Maybe this sounds like a good plan for you. Maybe not. Who knows? But after we're done, you know exactly where you stand. That's it. And I would talk to the guy across the street. I heard you were trying to buy the house across the street. Do you guys still want to move? Same concept. I need to understand the situation of my client first and foremost. I, <coughs> excuse me. I need to understand their emotion and their motivation and their plans and their desires before I can even decide, can I help these folks? Do I want to work with these folks? And maybe you're right. Maybe there is a simple way where you can sell the house across the street, help them buy this one, this guy moves, you help them. It can be an easy transaction, maybe. But you can't move forward. You can start offering solutions or letters or anything else until you have clarity. Now, the only way to gain that clarity is if you lay the foundation. And that's where this business stands on. And that's trust. You need to develop enough trust so that these folks can really be honest and open with you. And that requires skill. That requires ability to communicate on a level where they feel like, I'm comfortable with this guy. I can tell him the truth. Otherwise, you will be deceived. You will get brushes. You will get objections. It is your ability to connect on the human level. That's why I'm telling you guys. For time being, you as master communicators, as experts, as some of you, my students, have nothing to worry about. Because no machine, no algorithm, no Zillow, no not iBuyer cannot replace that. That ability to sit down and really ask and listen and, and talk. That's why you can't list a property over email. There needs to be that human connection where they explain to you, this is what we're trying to do, here are our expectations, this is our timeline, these are our reasons, what do you think? And you can say, possibly, yeah. Let's sit down. I'll prepare all the info. I'll put a CMA together. We'll sit down for 20, 30 minutes, go over everything, ask me questions, and then we'll decide. We'll see. There's no pressure. There's no manipulation. There's no agenda. People resent the agenda. They start pushing against that. They put barrier up because at the end, nobody really wants to be sold. They want to be helped. Or maybe it means, you know what? Stay where you are. Not realistic. Not, motiv not enough motivation, not enough fire, not enough fuel. But you don't know until you know. You cannot assume. You must know. And I know for some of you who are inexperienced or not very good at it at first, just like that baby walking, it's scary because you feel like, well, what if I turn them off? What if I put them off? What if they don't want to talk to me? Then ask yourself why. There are only two reasons. It's either you, they want to talk to an agent, they want help, just not from you, so you're screwing up the trust part, or moving is just not that important to them. The emotion, the desire, the need is just like, eh, you know, if it sells, we get our price. Eh. That's not the kind of seller you want to work with. But until you know, you don't know. You need to know. And that sometimes takes repetition. That sometimes takes continuous conversations. That requires follow-up. Remember, most of the transactions you generate, most of the listings you generate come from follow-up. Why is follow-up so important? Because it builds that connection, that trust. It builds the relationship.
Is that helpful? So that's what I would do, Brad. And that's what I would do with any lead. I want to give them the opportunity. Because if you do this right, they will appreciate it. You know the biggest problem you're going to run into? My students who study this, I have this program called the Core Influence. You're going to get these stack of cards that are like 80 different dialogue outlines. And you're going to get a book and a bunch of videos where I teach you how to do that. It's a skill. The biggest problem is not that you can't talk to people, they don't want to talk to you, they don't want to answer your questions. You know the biggest problem you're going to run into? Is they're going to talk too much. You hear the gardeners? Can you guys hear that? With the gardeners here, there are three dudes with those big blowers right now, blowing our front yard. I am in my home office right now. Like this big. That's what you got to do. You got to master the art of building trust, building connection, asking the right questions, so you, like a good doctor would, can diagnose. I want to help these people. I can help these people. I will help these people six months from now. They're not ready. These people are ready. Let's sit down. Let's talk. Make sense? That's what you got to do. All right, friends. Helpful? Wow, more people commit. Excellent. Dig that. Good. Good for you. It's going to make a big difference. Brad says they need more space. Let me put it in the focus here. Here it is. They need more space. Growing family. Why is that important? Dig deeper. What does it mean? How important is it? What will happen? This is an important question, Brad. If it doesn't sell, can they stay there? If the answer is no, you've got a great motivated seller. Explore that. Then it's just a matter of, well, let's sit down and let's figure out how we can make this happen for you. You have a growing family. You clearly need more space. So sooner or later, this is going to become a problem. I have found that the sooner we, we handle the problem, the easier it is because you have less pressure. If you have a bunch of kids running around and the house is really small, there's more pressure, it's more difficult. Let's get it done now. Let's figure out a way how we can make it happen. You know what I mean, Brad? So good, you're on the right track. Dig deeper, build a connection, find a solution. That's what I would do. Don't have them be stuck. Well, if this guy didn't buy it, we can't move. That's not true at all. On the contrary, they may get better offer from a motivated seller who comes from another agent, MLS, you, your marketing, other sources. It's never just about one buyer. You can always generate buyers. You know through good marketing how to do that. And I would even tell them, you know, finding the buyer is the easy part. It's not that hard. If the house is nice, shows nice, it's priced well, finding a buyer is not going to be hard. It's making sure they qualify, we're going to get the sucker closed so you can move, set up the contingency so you're protected, all that. That's the tricky part. But even that, we have solutions for. Yeah? Good. All right. Christopher would like to know if there's a coaching tomorrow. Absolutely. Yes, my man. We are doing PATH tomorrow. Love the core influence chapter. Good. Glad you do. Excellent. All right, my friends, that's our training today. Hope you enjoyed it. I know it was kind of intense and different. Somebody's got to tell you the truth. I'm not here to blow smoke up your ass. I'm not here to sugarcoat stuff. You signed up for this. This is the deal. This is the deal. But here's the best part. If this guy from Czechoslovakia figured it out, if thousands of others, including many of my students, figured it out, why not you? Why not? You got the answers. You got the tools. Come do the path with me. We'd love to have you. I'll give you all the resources, all the tools. And don't bullshit yourself about money. It's not. $6.57 a day, $197 a month for all the systems and all the coaching where you can build a profitable business, a listing a week business. That's my goal. Don't kid yourself. Don't tell yourself stories. Okay? Thanks for being here today, my friends. Time to go. Time to wrap up. Appreciate every single one of you. Thank you, Rockstars. For my past students, I'll see you tomorrow on the Q&A. We're doing a real estate 911. You're going to get a phone number. We're going to talk. On Thursday, another session of our boot camp. Good stuff coming your way. I'm excited. Next week, big announcement. We have a big guest speaker. A friend of mine is coming. We're going to chat. It's going to be really good and really interesting. Stay tuned. For the rest of you, have a fantastic day, my friends. Go get them. Plenty of people to help. Plenty of transactions. Plenty of opportunities. Grab them. Thanks for being here today. Coach Borino signing off. Let's go get him. Bye, everybody.